In this video, let's explore how to implement the database fast approach in entity framework code. To begin, I have created two tables, students and teachers, with student ID and teacher ID serving as primary key. Now, open Visual Studio and select create a new project and click next. Choose ASP.NET Core web app model view controller and click next. Specify a project name and desired location to save the project and click next. Select the desired framework and click create. This will generate a new web application. Then in the NuGet Package Manager console, run the Microsoft Entity Framework Core SQL Server to enable the Entity Framework Core with Microsoft SQL Server as a database provider. Then install the Microsoft Entity Framework Core .sql .design to include the design time component important for development. Then install Microsoft Entity Framework Core .tools. It provides a set of Entity Framework Core tools for tasks like database migrations and code generation. Then run the scaffold db context command to generate the data model from the existing database. Now you can observe the sample db context.cs file has been successfully created, containing entities for student and teacher with key references. Next, let's test the entity framework functionality. Start by creating an object for sample db context in the index model. Retrieve the list of students from the table and pass the student object to the view. In the view page, implement list student and create a table to display the student list. Include the necessary columns. Using a for loop, display the line items of the students. Run the application to view the output in the browser. You will now see the list of student details, confirming that the entity framework is functioning correctly. Next, let's discuss how to set the connection string in the app settings.json file. To do this, navigate to sample db context.cs file and remove the onConfigure method. Then proceed to the app settings.json file and add the co connection string attribute. Afterward, go to the program.cs file and configure the db context. In the get connection string method, Provide the key value corresponding to the connection configured in the appconfig.json file. Now head to the controller and make a slight modification to the code. Inject the db context into the controller constructor, replacing the previous context object. Finally, run the application and observe how it functions. Next, let's see how to update the entity framework when adding a new column to the table. For I am altering the student table by adding a new column grade level. Then navigate it to the package manager console. With the existing scaffold db context command, I am adding the attribute hyphen force. Now you can see in the student model, grade level field has been added. Now let's look at adding a new table to the entity framework. I'm adding a two tables, course and enrollment. Using the scaffold db context command, I include the attribute hyphen tables and list the table names with commas. Example, course hyphen enrollment. After executing the command, the course and enrollment entities are added. For more details about entity framework commands, you can type get help about entity framework code in the package manager console. It will provide a list of all commands and their explanation. If you wish to learn about a specific command, for example, scaffold db context, type get help space scaffold db context to retrieve information about that particular command.
thanks for watching and happy coding.